Miller. The name is synonymous with the very best in welding products, systems, solutions, and services for leading edge manufacturing environments. Our products help manufacturers of high volume, repetitive components reduce welding costs through process innovation, automation, or both. Our experts have decades of experience responding to customer needs, solving problems related to travel speed, burn through, gaps, inconsistent piece parts, weld quality, excess rework, spatter, tooling, upstream process variations that only become apparent when parts come together in the welding cell. By combining our expertise and knowledge of arc welding applications, equipment, and controls with input from end users, robot OEMs, integrators, value-added resellers, and local distributors, we are able to bring you the best products for your specific semi-automatic, automatic, and robotic manufacturing welding needs. Meet Miller's Access and Auto Access systems. High-performance MIG welding for both pulsing and non-pulsing applications. With superior arc performance, productivity, digital communication, and configuration flexibility, the Access and Auto Access make the future of welding available today. There are several models available to meet your semi-automatic or robotic welding needs. The Access and Auto Access 300. The Access and Auto Access 450. And the Access and Auto Access 675. With Miller, you're assured of rock solid, consistent output, even with fluctuating primary lines. With Auto Line, no special transformers are required. Equipment performs identically with consistent results anywhere in the world. Sure Start technology provides consistent arc starts by precisely controlling power levels for specific wire and gas combinations. Gas metal arc welding programs include the Miller patented AccuPulse, AccuCurve, AccuSpeed, Standard or Adaptive Pulse, Conventional MIG, and Optional Regulated Metal Deposition or RMD. We will discuss these in more detail later. Our access systems for semi-automatic MIG combine digital control technology with an inverter welding source. The access four drive roll wire drive feeder is combined with operator interface making access to all controls a snap. Miller recommends the purchase of one palm handheld per plant for communication through the RS-232 serial port for data transfer, updates, and optional program downloads from the web at millerwells.com forward slash AMS and click on the Access tab. The Auto Access systems for robotic automation are a seamless integration of digital control technology combining an inverter welding power source and robotic interface. The Auto Access features AutoCal. AutoCal automatically calibrates analog robot commands with the power supply. It easily connects to existing robots. Our 72-pin Harding connector simplifies setup and assures accuracy. AutoCal makes it possible to extend the use of existing non-digital robot systems and assures consistent performance if the power source is ever moved to another robot. This makes the Auto Access the number one choice for retrofit. The Auto Access allows you to take advantage of a digital power supply on a non-digital robot. And a 72-pin Harding connector makes connecting to common analog robot controllers quick and easy. The Auto Access DI has the same seamless integration of digital control technology combining an inverter welding power source and robotic interface with the new generation of digital robot controllers. The Auto Access DI is sold through the various robot manufacturers. The digital signal processing eliminates the need for scaling and calibration. Now your operations can take advantage of a complete digital solution from robot to power supply. Either access system simplifies welding operations and setup, giving you more time to focus on production. These digital arc welding systems provide a toolbox of optimized and new software-based arc welding processes, each with distinct results. 
Miller's patented auto line power management technology allows for any primary input voltage hookup with no manual linking from 190 volts through 600 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. And because all these processes and more are available in each innovative multi-MIG access welding system, you can standardize on a common platform for all your semi-automatic or automated welding needs. With Miller's family of access systems, you have many options for gas metal arc welding. Let's discuss each of the available processes and their related benefits. In order to understand pulsing processes, we need to understand the basic principle of GMAWP. Pulsed MIG is a modified spray transfer process. Pulsed transfer continuously propels drops of molten metal across the arc. In pulsed spray transfer, the power source rapidly switches the welding output from high peak current to low background current. The peak current pinches off a spray transfer droplet and propels it toward the weldment for good fusion. The background current maintains the arc, but is too low for metal transfer to occur. With no metal transfer, the weld puddle gets a chance to cool. AccuPulse is a new process technology created by Miller for pulsed MIG welding that monitors, controls, and modifies pulsing parameters hundreds of times faster than previous pulsing technology. AccuPulse benefits semi-automatic, automatic, and robotic welding in manufacturing autos, truck and trailer, rail cars, light gauge manufacturing, fabrication shops, agricultural, and construction equipment. AccuPulse provides shorter arc lengths along with more focused arc column, which in turn provides significantly improved puddle control and arc stability. AccuPulse also improves welding in tight corners without arc wonder. Its quick adaptability when welding over tack wells eliminates spatter and stumbles. The AccuPulse program works by specifying key variables for the application at hand. The welding power source then chooses from a vast library of data and selects the optimum pulsing parameters for the selected variables. AccuPulse samples the arc voltage 10,000 times per second during the peak and background time, allowing it to adapt hundreds of times faster than other systems. In addition to using speed for improvement, AccuPulse adjusts the current to a predetermined level at the beginning of each peak and background phase. In other words, AccuPulse ramps the current up or down to stay within the range of the proper level for a specific wire diameter and type, wire feed speed, and gas combination, which means a proper arc condition is much more likely. Welding machines are usually classified as constant current or constant voltage. A constant current or CC machine will vary its output voltage to maintain a steady current while a constant voltage or CV machine will fluctuate its output current to maintain a set voltage. GMAW pulse welding allows the use of CC in the MIG process by rapidly alternating between a target peak current and a target background current. This rapid transition detaches a droplet of molten metal and transfers it across the arc. As it is a modified spray transfer, it is possible to prevent short circuits and eliminate spatter. CV welding typically allows short circuits in the arc. The shorter arc lengths attainable in CV meant faster travel speeds for manufacturing. AccuPulse and its variations allow the combination of spatter control and faster welding travel speeds by using both CC and CV in the same pulsed waveform. Let's look at how the CC and CV waveforms work together. Once the target current is reached at the beginning of each pulse phase, the CC control turns off and the CV control loop turns on. The CV loop modulates the current to achieve the target voltage, allowing AccuPulse to create the desired wave shapes with arc characteristics that optimize desired arc performance. With the ability to better regulate pulsing parameters, AccuPulse allows operators 
to maintain a shorter arc length, regardless of stickout, with a more focused arc column. This results in greater speed and control. AccuPulse gives operators superior control over the weld puddle, reducing spatter and cleanup, ultimately saving time and money. In automatic applications, AccuPulse improves welding over tack wells, where the arc length can adapt rapidly without stumbling and causing spatter or tip burnback. AccuPulse reacts so quickly that it increases power immediately and keeps the arc above the tack to maintain productivity and weld quality. In most applications, holding a shorter arc length reduces overall heat input, improves control, and increases travel speeds. This may enable superior welding on thinner materials or using the next larger diameter electrode. For example, AccuPulse permits welding steel out of position with an 052 diameter wire instead of the 045 wire commonly used and larger diameter wires cost less and offer improved feeding performance. To recap, AccuPulse makes shorter arc lengths possible, allowing faster travel speeds and greater control, especially when welding out of position. It allows better puddle control, directed arc, and is more tolerant of contact tip to work variation. It adapts extremely fast over tack wells, Larger wire diameters can be used, which saves money. There's no arc wandering in tight corners and a stiffer arc plasma column. It's more tolerant with poor fit up and gaps and provides perfect performance with through arc seam tracking. AccuSpeed is a variation of the AccuPulse process. AccuSpeed uses the same CV adaptive scheme and waveform technology as the AccuPulse process. The AccuSpeed waveforms, however, were developed for the type of arcs needed in automotive frame welding applications. It can be used in manual applications when welding out of position, requiring a tight, fast freezing arc. Tight driving arcs can be directed into the joint and keep the arc stable at the high travel speeds used in automotive frame welding. In general, the AccuSpeed waveforms have a lower average voltage and amperage when compared to the similar AccuPulse waveforms, reducing high heat input and warping. AccuCurve is another variation of the AccuPulse process. The process still uses the same CV adaptive scheme and waveform topology as the AccuPulse process. The main difference is the current transitions from peak to background and from background to peak. In AccuPulse, they were done with linear CC transitions of amps per milliseconds. In AccuCurve, they are done with curves or transitions of amps per millisecond squared. This curved transition aids in ball detachment and gives the transfer a softer feel without sacrificing the tight arc lengths that allow for better puddle control. The waveform is primarily used on aluminum and stainless steel. The machine is capable of welding using standard pulse. A small percentage of end users may require traditional pulse welding for procedure qualification records or nickel and high alloy material. Metal core is a special type of wire used for increased deposition rates and efficiency over solid wire. A more focused arc allows higher travel speeds. During the metal transfer, the drop is smaller, more focused, and makes the weld puddle easier to control. This allows the user to take advantage of metal core wires faster travel speeds, higher deposition rates, and decreased need for post-weld cleanup. Metal core can be used in MIG, AccuPulse, and RMD processes. Short circuit MIG is a low heat input process. The low heat gives advantages when bridging large gaps or welding on thin materials. Short circuit transfer typically generates some spatter that may or may not be acceptable on light gauge materials. The access provides a superior MIG arc than conventional transformer-based welding equipment. Regulated metal deposition, or RMD, 
is an optional software-based precise wave-controlled short circuit transfer and eliminates spatter. It's a method of predicting when the short is going to clear and then rapidly reacting to this data, changing the current levels. Early prediction of the short clearing enables quick reduction of the available current, minimizing the arc force and reducing the amount and size of spatter. The molten puddle is calm, reducing splash and cold lamp effects normally associated with short circuit transfer. RMD can be used with very thin materials or to make a small, low heat input bead on thicker material. It can help compensate for poor part fit up and less than ideal weld joints. RMD allows better gap filling as well as spatter elimination or reduction. It provides more distortion control and less heat into thin workpieces. RMD has excellent performance on stainless and is very tolerant to contact tube to work distance variation. It can replace TIG processes in some applications and can be combined with other access options. The access user interface is very similar to the auto access user interface. However, since there is no robot involved, the operator has full control over the arc length and wire feed speed settings. To power up the machine, turn the power knob to the on position. Net weight indicates that the network is establishing digital communication between the various circuit boards in the feeder and the access power source. Next, the machine identifies itself, then moves to the ready state. Anytime an LED is lit, the knob adjusts that function. You have AccuPulse, AccuCurve, MIG, AccuSpeed, optional RMD, and pulse processes in default settings. Each machine has a free 8-hour RMD demo which can be activated using the Palm Pilot. Let's run through an example. We'll choose AccuPulse. Once you select the process you want, press the setup again and you can select your wire type. You can choose between steel, stainless steel, metal core, or aluminum. We'll select steel in this case and press the setup button again to select the tensile strength of the wire. In steel wire, there are different strengths. Our options are 70,000, 80,000, 100,000, or 120,000 tensile strength. We'll select 70,000 tensile, which happens to be the most common. After you've selected the type of wire, you can select the diameter of wire. We can choose from 035, 040, 045, 052, and 062 diameter. We'll choose 045 diameter this time. We'll press the setup button again and now we select the type of gas we'll use. Again, turning the knob displays the appropriate choices of gas. C20 represents 20% CO2 with the balance being argon. C10 is 10% CO2. 5 ox is 5% oxygen. We'll choose C10. When we press this through another example, this time let's choose MIG. Press the setup button again and we'll choose steel. Press the setup button. As we mentioned earlier, there are different strengths for steel wire. Our options are 70,000, 100,000, and 120,000 tensile strength. We'll select E70, which happens to be the most common. Then we'll choose from 035, 045, 052, or 062 diameter. We'll choose 045 diameter. Press setup again to select the gas. C10 represents 10% CO2 with the balance being argon. C5 is 5% CO2. 
5-Ox is 5% oxygen and C25 is 25% CO2. We'll choose C10. Press setup for the final time and now we have this program stored in slot 2. Companies who use Trigger Dual Schedule or Trigger Pro different programs. There are several hidden functions within the user interface. We will spend a little time on them now, but they are also described in the Owner's Manual. To reset the menu, press and hold the Program button during Power Up. The Network Wait screen appears, followed by Reset No. Turn the Adjust knob to Yes. A flashing LED on the Feeder Setup button will flash. Push the Feeder Setup button. Cycle Power now appears on the screen. Turn off the machine for 10 seconds. Turn on machine while holding down the Process Setup button. The software versions for the three circuit boards in the Access or Access Feeder will appear. To view software revision of the PCM, WFM and UIM, use the Adjust knob. A flashing LED appears by the Feeder Setup button. Press the Feeder Setup button. Cycle Power appears on the screen. Turn off machine for 10 seconds. To enter the ARC control menu, turn on the machine, then press and hold the lower display button for 2 seconds. Changing the ARC control setting is done by using the Adjust knob pressing the lower display button a second time or by pressing the program button will return the machine to standby state. When we press the feeder setup button we enter the sequence menu. The sequence LED is lit. Preflow is the first step of the weld sequence. Press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to set the preflow time values from 0 to 5 seconds. The next step is Start Power. To access Start Power, press the upper display button, turn the adjust knob to start to program more or less heat at the beginning of the weld. To activate and change Start Power settings, press the lower display knob and turn the adjust knob. The first setting to change is Time. Time values from 0 to 5 seconds can be entered. Press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to change wire feed speed settings. Press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to change the arc adjust or voltage. We have already set the weld control through the main user interface so it does not show up in the sequence. The next step in sequence is crater. This allows the user to program a delay at the end of the weld to fill the crater. To change crater parameters, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to change the time settings. To change the wire feed speed settings, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob. And finally, to change the arc adjust, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob. To exit the crater setting, push the upper display button and turn the adjust knob to retract. Retract chin of the wire at the end of the previous weld to reduce the possibility of the wire touching at the next arc start. This improves arc starting. To change the retract parameters, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to set the retract time. To change the wire feed speed, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob. To exit retract, press the upper display button and turn the adjust knob to post flow. To change a time value in post flow, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob. Once a time value is set, the sequence is complete. To review sequence settings, press the upper display button and use the adjust knob to cycle through the settings. To exit the sequence menu, press the program button. To access the trigger control menu, press the feeder setup button twice. The trigger control LED is lit. DS stands for dual schedule. 
Dual schedule allows the use of a slider switch or a two position trigger switch on the welding torch to change schedules while welding. To activate DS, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to the on position. To turn DS off, turn the adjust knob to off. Press the upper display button and turn the adjust knob to TH. TH stands for trigger hold. When trigger hold is turned on, the trigger can be released once the weld is in progress and the machine will continue to weld until the trigger is pulled and released again. To turn on trigger hold, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to the on position. The trigger hold LED is lit. To exit trigger hold, turn the adjust knob to the off position. Press the upper display button and turn the adjustment knob to 4T. 4T refers to four trigger changes using the torch trigger. To turn on 4T, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to the on position. Trigger hold is automatically activated when 4T is in the on position. The first trigger pull enters the start sequence state. Releasing the trigger will change to weld settings with trigger hold on. Pulling the trigger again will go to the crater setting. Releasing the trigger will allow crater to time out and welding stops. To exit 4T, turn the adjust knob to off. Press the upper display button and turn the adjust knob to TDS. TDS stands for Trigger Dual Schedule. A quick release and pull of the torch trigger while welding will allow switching of pairs of programs. To turn on TDS, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to the on position. TDS will only allow switching between pairs of programs. To exit TDS, turn the adjust knob to off. Press the upper display button and turn the adjust knob to TPS. TPS stands for Trigger Program Select. Trigger Program Select allows the changing of programs or schedules by pulling and releasing the torch trigger quickly when not welding. To turn on TPS, press the lower display button and turn the adjust knob to on. To allow program selection, a preflow value must be entered. Any one of the eight programs that has 0.2 seconds of preflow or more will allow trigger selection. To turn off TPS, turn the adjust knob to off. To exit the trigger control program, press the program button. The optional Miller Palm OS-based file management software turns a standard Palm handheld into a data card and remote pendant control for all access systems. By using a handheld in this manner, we have built a powerful, intuitive interface on a common, affordable, portable platform. We recommend the purchase of the Palm Pilot and file management software for each plant. Palm Pilot File Management allows us to cut, copy, and paste programs from the welder into our Palm for permanent storage or into other machines. The Free Service Pack application allows us to download free operating software from www.millerwelds.com forward slash AMS 24 hours, 7 days a week. We can select which code modules we would like to download. Downloading all the modules is recommended. Surface Pack pull-down menus include Communication Diagnostics, Weld Diagnostics, and Limited Configuration. Full configuration is available with the optional File Management application. Weld Data Diagnostics can be found in the Surface Pack pull-down menu. It provides command and actual weld data from either the robot, auto access, or semi-auto access machines. Communication Diagnostics is also in the pull-down menu. This provides the status of the signals being sent 
from the different circuit boards in the auto access or semi-auto access machines. This function helps troubleshoot where the signal is coming from and whether it's accurate. Configuration searches the machine to determine how it's set up or configured. There are also pull-down menus for cycles, software, and error logs. Cycles are how many starts the power supply has done, how many arc hours it has been welding, and how many inches of wire it has fed since the last reset. This is an excellent tool for weld cost calculation. Software indicates what software revision is presently in the machine's circuit boards, and error logs show if there have been any errors. The main function of the Service Pack application is updating software in the access equipment. If we want to download software, we simply go to the Internet, hot sync the software into the Palm Pilot, bring the Palm to the shop floor, and download the software from the Palm to the power supply. It takes about 8 to 12 minutes. The file management application stores weld programs. Programs can exist on the welder or on the Palm Pilot. So, we identify these programs as welder programs or palm programs. Programs can be copied and pasted between the palm and the welder. The letter C in front of the program number indicates that it is a custom program. Cycling power does not erase programs. If the machine is reset, all programs, including custom programs, will be erased. Using the front panel interface, standard programs can be reloaded. Custom programs must be backed up on the palm and then reloaded to the user interface. We can store 64 welding programs on the palm. On the welder, we can access eight welding programs while all other programs reside in the internal memory. Configuration files contain setup information. They can be saved on the palm or in the welder. We can only have one configuration file on the welder. We could store multiple configuration files on the palm, but typically there is one for the whole factory. Welding and configuration files can also be emailed. Eight welding programs and one configuration program reside in the welder. The backup function saves all nine into one backup file. The Palm Pilot can be used to make changes to programs or user interface controls. We can open a welding program file from the Palm and see the sequence and modify it if necessary. We can also modify the configuration program. We can change the control and remote program selection. Remote program selection is a command from the robot directing which program to run and when. When a machine is locked, the operator cannot change anything in the user interface. This prevents operators from loading the wrong data or changing the data. It also protects against welding outside pre-qualified parameters. Using the Palm Pilot, we can also lock certain programs and make them inaccessible through the user interface. Locks allow manufacturers to guarantee correct settings are used in accordance with their manufacturing standards. Locks can only be disabled through the palm. RMD can be ordered as a factory installed option or installed as a field option using the connection for Palm Pilot. RMD is an optional software. An RMD demo comes with each machine and provides eight hours of arc on time. The RMD demo is enabled using the Palm and file management software. The full RMD program is available for purchase and is easily installed as a software update. Miller provides seven day a week around the clock access to additional information and resources through our website www.millerwelds.com forward slash AMS. Whether you need to download software updates, access information for additional training, 
check PDFs of training manuals or other documents. Use the online configurator to create a list of equipment and pricing for your applications or to order accessories our website is always available. There is even an online simulator to help familiarize you with the Access Systems user interface. Miller, bringing you the future of welding today.